Good evening and welcome to the Cheltenham Exchange and the first in this season's series of Twitter tips videos. Um, a series, the brainchild of Alex, who's sadly not with us tonight, um, that went really quite well last year, I think, didn't it, lads? It, it was uh, quite a popular series. So uh, anybody who's not familiar with it, throughout the month of February, um, we've been posting a poll on our Twitter, a race a day, going in order of the races in the Cheltenham Festival. Um, and then we analyse the results of those polls on a weekly basis, um, day to day, basically. That sounds really confusing. Yeah. <laughs> so, but for example, today's first video, we're looking at day one, the seven races on day one, based on the polls from the last seven days. So, yeah, like I say, Mr. Galpin's brainchild last year, it went very well. Unfortunately, Alex is watching Chelsea and Aston Villa tonight. Last yeah, be night, happy at the minute. Should be quite happy, shouldn't he? Yeah, turn you Happier than Ollie Murphy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, unfortunately, no Alex tonight. So, you're stuck with me hosting this. So, uh, it, it won't be as uh, <laughs> informative from my perspective. But... I've got two resident experts. We've got Ian and Johnny with us. How are we doing, boys? Very oh, good. good. Thank just, you. Just recovered from the weekend now, Joy. I was going to say, f freshly back from the Dublin Racing Festival, both these boys. Ian's a bit hoarse. I don't know how Johnny's, oh, yeah. Johnny's doing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not too bad. Um, I felt a bit tired Monday, but we we'll soon get back into the swing of things, don't you? Yep. Good weekend, enjoyable weekend, lads. Lots of networking, meeting up with old and new friends. We did. We um, so we met me and Johnny met with uh, cool. Who did we meet? Don, we met, didn't we? And so Jamie ran the guys from uh, the finishing line. We met up with some um, good old Phil Daniel from Wales. We met him, one of the guys who follows us. Um, oh, Deck don't from forget, don't, don't forget Scotty and George. Oh, yeah, Scotty, yeah, Scotty and Ginger are. Upset, I think, sharing a room with them. But um, I'm sure they'll tell everybody about that later. But no, yeah. great that people coming up to us and saying to watch our shows and fantastic response. But that was brilliant. Yeah, I did a rumor that uh, you were banned from sharing a room with them in the future. Yeah. But we'll go no further with that snoring. One. Let's just say snoring. Snoring. <laughs> snoring. <laughs> so, um, yeah, before we get straight into the Twitter tips, a couple of things. Um, Fantastic response to the racing pins competition we ran the other week. Uh, congratulations to our winner, Gavin Slater. Um, and like I say, yeah, a, a fantastic response. It was over 260 odd retweets or something, I think. It was wasn't absolutely there? amazing. The old wheel was struggling to go around yeah. when he did the draw. <laughs> I could, it, it took me about 40 minutes to put all the people's names on it, took that long. Excellent. I couldn't like see it. my name on it, Ian, so I don't know. It was on there. It was on there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, congratulations, Gavin. Uh, thank you to Connor at Racing Pins. And keep your eyes peeled because we've got another competition coming up in the coming days. Um, yeah. For the Better Fair Hurdle at Newbury on the weekend. Is that right, Ian? Potentially? Uh, we have. It's going to be on Twitter. So what we'll do is we'll get people to uh, who they think is going to win the... Um, the bet for a hurdle and, and all, all the people that pick the right horse will go into the pot again. And uh, they potentially could win a, a, a pin of their choice from racing pins. Keep your eyes peeled, folks. Thank you, boss man. Okay. Um, just as I've joined, come rushing in a bit windswept and not really knowing what's going on. You boys have just informed me that Grange Clare West is out at a festival which yes. could affect some people's thinking towards, well, certainly uh, the four miler that we'll be looking at today. Or yeah, it's very it. disappointing that. I mean, I had a 50, 50 to one ticket for the uh, the Browns, which was annoying, but it's that time of the, the season now, isn't it? We're going to get things like this on a regular basis, most probably. So it's just trying to you know, keep it to a minimum, hopefully, this year. Fingers crossed. Could be a bit of rerouting, though. May make yeah. uh, 
We've already heard him. The Gardens could be going back to the Browns, and obviously, what happened today with Corbett's cross, and yeah, could all be changing. It's all the that's all the fun and games of it. it. <laughs> all the fun and games. And finally, before we go into it, must mention a big congratulations to Niall Houlihan, who did us a massive turn at, early on in the season when he came on for an interview, which was an excellent interview. Still up on our YouTube channel if you yeah. want to go and watch it. Well worth a watch. But yeah, Niall at, uh, where was he today? Ludlow, I think he was. And he rode the winner in the opening race, which meant that he rode out his claim. It's up to 75 winners. So congratulations, Niall. He had mentioned on the oh, video well. that once you ride out your claim, you've, you you st still retain your conditional status for six months. So he was hoping he would do it between September, end of September and March, I think, so that he was still able to ride in the Martin Pipe, potentially. So, uh, yeah, well done, Niall. And, uh, and all the best for the rest of the season. Okay. So that's six minutes worth of... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what from me. Let's get into these Twitter tips then. So uh, we started off on the 1st of February, which was oh. last Tuesday, I believe, was it? There we go. Supreme, I was on the wrong side. There we go. <laughs> Good start. Good start. <laughs> Good start. Uh, no, no, it wouldn't have been last Tuesday. It was the last, uh, last Thursday, wasn't it, we started off? Yep. Uh, Paul last Thursday for the Supreme Novices. Um, and as you can see, the vote was pretty close here. Ballyburn just about by 0.3 of a percent nick in the vote. Obviously, following on from that, um, Ballyburn romped home in a novice hurdle uh, at the DRF. Very impressively, there's still... Obviously, a lot of discussion on whether people think he'll run in the Supreme or in the Bear and Bingham. Um, but yeah, boys, well, to begin off, to start off with, you were both there. Was it as impressive in the flesh as it looked on the TV? You go with outstanding, I thought, OJ. Left from, well, we'll say not start to finish, but you could see he had control in the race from, I don't know, the first couple of hurdles out, but he was just. Just controlled the race. I think even Ruby Walsh has come out and said potentially the first two you see, could see the Supreme winner and, and the and the Ballymore winner or the whatever it's called now. But uh, yeah, he, he was mightily impressive. Just a shame they took the last hurdle out, but no, nah, very, very good. Excellent. And then as as we say, there's still a lot of debate about where he goes. We can see the bookies foe there. He's put uh Oak Ballyburn for the Supreme. As Stayers win Supremes, and I think he's a future Gold Cup winner and reminds me in many ways of the Tank Denman. Yeah. <sighs> High praise indeed. Yeah. One of my all-time favourites, Denman. So, uh, yeah, high praise. What do you think of that, Johnny? Big yeah, that statement. Or... Um, yeah, I, I mean, I was like here, very impressed with him. It was the, the first win, really, the weekend that sort of made me think, wow, uh, I said that at the time. Um, arguably the best performance of the whole weekend for me. Um, where, whether he goes here is still very, very much in the air, as we know we will. He will we'll all find out two days before. Um, I mean, he still could go the the bear in Bingham, can't he? So, you know, I, I really, I, I'm really 50-50 on where he goes. I mean, I've got him covered for both races, but yeah, I'm just not sure, to be honest with you, which one he'll rock up at. I think it all depends on talent, doesn't it? With... Um... Obviously, with Mr. Good Power, potentially you'd be Mark Walsh's ride. I'm guessing that Nico will be on Jericho de Repine. So they're the two JP horses. It's is what what does Willie have left in the um in the Supreme? So he could maybe Il Atlantic could go here. Mirazor West will, mm, maybe. I know it's another JP horse, but maybe could go on him. But it's been a bit bit quiet on him, so I'm not quite sure. But so I think it could potentially be. More so, I think, with Townend, I think, and who he chooses. Mm. And uh, Paul Milner's added there, Jericho is better than that last run. Slow pace didn't suit him. I think he'll step up. Ballyburn probably rocks up in the Ballymore, whatever he does this weekend. And Mystical Power needs to jump better. Interesting thoughts. Mm. 
Um, but obviously, yeah, um, don't know. Those are, was it you uh, mentioned one that's entered? Is it Nace on the weekend, John? Is it Goucher or? It is, yeah. I mean, that's oh, one that yeah. I've sort of had in the tracker for a while now, and I backed it onto post, but I haven't been seen until now. I mean, you know, if anyone's going to put out a horse this late, it romps home and stick it in the Supreme after one run. It's Willie, isn't it? So, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I think he's got, is it a couple of entries at the weekend? So hopefully he takes one of them up. I mean, obviously he's been slow to hand coming out this late, hasn't he? So we'll, we'll see what he's like. But yeah, he could be a fly in the ointment with a good performance at the weekend. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, Ballyburn just nicked the vote. May have been a bit stronger if the vote was after the weekend. Mm. A couple of others I noticed were mentioned in in uh, the comments. Michael Moffat had mentioned Ela Atlantique Ian, and uh, Steve Cookson had put up Firefox because he thinks Ballyburn and Mystical Power will go mm. to the Bear and Bingham. He did beat Ballyburn, didn't he, over two miles? So it's... Well, he's he's the only horse that has beaten uh, mm. Ballyburn so far, I think, isn't he? So yes, S still not very much clearer. But uh, there we go. And a nice tight vote to begin with, which can't be said for a lot of the other races that we might be coming to. <laughs> Especially this next one. Yeah, you wait for the next one, don't you? This next one. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Oh. So, ooh, the apple. As you can tell on this one, <laughs> the vote was also <laughs> before the DRF. Marine National absolutely romped the vote for this one um, and then disappointed to say the least last weekend so um, Harry Morn in here, Marine National will probably, probably win but at 9-2 to two, I'll have to have something on Fasel Vega at the weekend William Midlands can't be that badly wrong with this horse can he Derek Orr, Marine National will win at the Leopardstown, Cheltenham and Punchestown festivals, Mullins and Elliot will each try their best to beat him with different horses at each of the courses, but will come up short on each occasion. So, uh, wow. <laughs> but to be fair to Derek, I think there was probably a fair few people who thought similarly. Um, no, I, yeah, I certainly did. And I think our ginger friend did as well. I had to uh, yeah, console well, him on Saturday. He was, uh, wasn't happy. Yeah. I think uh, I'm not sure much. I'm not sure how much you consoled him. Taking a picture of him while he was getting <laughs> watching the end of the race probably didn't help massively. I did buy him a vodka and coke, and that softened the blow a bit. And then <laughs> <laughs> he had a big winner later in the day, and that softened it as well. I hope it's a double Ian. <laughs> yeah. Um, and interested here, obviously, you know, Gaelic Warrior. There were rumours where he could potentially go another. A huge disappointment, really, on the mm. weekend. So, um, yeah, Johnny, how was how, how was your mind changed on here, mm. or has your mind changed? It, it just shows, doesn't it? This is a case in point of how things can change after one race. I mean, they were the top three in the market when Alex posted this last week, um, and now everybody's saying all three are busted flushes, aren't they? And it's, yeah. it's just, yeah. it's just crazy how things have just gone to. You know, topsy turvy in this race. Um, I, I spoke to Scotty and a couple of lads about this on on the weekend, and we sort of were on the same path with a, co a couple of the others now at bigger prices, uh, trying to get them covered. And they were, I mean, I quite like JPR one before this race happened at the weekend. Um, we know he's sort of proven on the on the course, isn't he? And you know, he, he should have won there, but apart mm. from a that unlucky fall and seat or whatever it was, it's. Uh, um, November meeting, wasn't it? I think that was. But like he's bounced back pretty well um, since and, and looks a, a decent sort. Um, the other one that Scotty mentioned that I liked as well was Quilixios, who, you know, he's had a couple of runs, hasn't he? And he's done okay. He had one bad run. Um, hopefully put that behind him. He could be like a bit of a an outsider now at about 12 to 1 that could come into the picture after the weekend. But, I mean... <laughs> It's quite, you know, it, it still could happen that Marine turns up and, and beats them all, isn't it? I mean, he's obviously got a talent and things just didn't go his way. And whether it was the ground or the wind up or whatever, um, who knows? But 
I'm sure he won't run as bad as that come come March. Yeah. I, what about uh, the handicapper? Did he have a chance? I mean, I liked him last season, but uh, well, he's put himself in the picture now, hasn't he? So, you know. Yeah. He, he's, he's, he's he got, won, won there in Leopardstown last year, didn't he? Yeah, he, he's got as much chance as anything, really, I suppose, hasn't he? Mm, so he's totally, I know he's still the favourite Marine, but so I'm just looking at some of these. Found the 50, Hunter's Yarn. JPR one and Quilix, as you said, Blood Destiny. It could bring all these. The, back into the, the one thing now. that would put me off about Elite Tom, he's had two runs at Cheltenham and he's finished fifth both times. Mm. So, you know, Marine destroyed him last year, didn't he? In the in the Supreme. So yeah, you know, there's one good takeaway here, though, boys. With only five weeks to Marine. go, or whatever it should be, it should be. It promises to be a more open article than it mm. was looking like it was going to be last week. Which well, is yeah. uh, a positive in my eyes, anyway. I think. Yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, we all moan about short prices and that. Well, you know, we don't have. We shouldn't moan now, should we? Now there are bigger prices available, so mm, no, you know, people can get not. stuck into whoever they like, can't they? Now and uh, you know, everyone just, will be happy. And just to go back, I can see there who's got the list of previous winners. Two thousand and nineteen. This kind of race now could replicate that. I think that the, the Geneva wins. You, it wasn't really that fancy. It could we could see like an unfancied horse. Come and win like that, 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 like that year in 2019, but you never know. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Right, lovely. Right, we'll uh, skip on from the article and uh, Alex's race. Speaking of Alex, yeah. he's, the ultimate, he's the ultimate king, but he's not with us, as you can see from uh, previous winners on the right hand side or left hand side of the screen. No, right hand side. Um, yeah. Alex uh, Correct Rambler, I think he put that up the last the last two years. Mm. Um vintage clouds. I was on that that day. Um but yeah, um so still wide open. I think we were saying just before coming on, Correct Rambler's still sitting at the head of the market, even though he's on a mark in the very high one fifties, I think now, one five nine or something. Yeah. What did he win off last year? 144 or 146 or something like that. So surely uh, a tall task. Um, wide open is, you know, what can you say? But looking at the vote that we had, Chianti Classico took over half of the votes at 52%. And I had a look earlier. I think there was a total of 75 votes. So over half the votes out of 75 votes and is currently around 10 to 1. So in such an open race, it's interesting. It may be that it's easier to pick the ones where you've got options rather than name another horse, but it's, mm. it's still a pretty strong representation of what people are thinking. Ian, you were, uh, you're already on Chianti Classico here? I am. So I backed it before. I'm trying to think where we went. Uh, Kempton. And then Harry Cobden was on board that day, and he, he was a bit of a strange ride. He was like he was wired all the time, and mm, I, I prefer Bass to be back on uh, on Chianti Classico, if I'm honest. But uh, he's definitely one. He, he's impressed me so far, like the previous races in the season. He, he would probably be the one I look at at the minute, but it could be something lurking, as we know, and also know the Irish never win this race. So could there be an Irish lurker here? Probably not, but. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough at the minute, OJ. It is tough. Nassalam up there, Johnny. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, well, he's already well. done me done me a couple of good turns, hasn't he, this season already? I mean, I'd love it if he went and won it, but um, he could be too high in the weights as well. I mean, obviously, we'll have to wait and see, but he's uh, his marks uh, ballooned, doesn't it, after that uh, that last win, the Welsh National, wasn't it? So, um, yeah. I was thinking... Um, I was thinking that you know is is Mark uh, as the Mark gone now, but he looks a totally different horse this year. He does, doesn't he? Yeah, he's been I mean, um, outstanding, hasn't he? So you mentioned that Welsh national win. I mean, Christ, he romped it, didn't he? I mean, if he wins this, he'll have to go to the Gold Cup next year, won't he? Yeah, is yeah. it one six one? I think he's on now. Yeah, it's a bit. Is your rating RPR one six five? So, so you, that's that's like a goal, yeah, like a gold cup mark, isn't it? 
Yeah, there's probably something lurking that could uh, take advantage of a mark a bit, a bit easier. Yeah, I think it's one to look at a little bit closer to the time. And judging by the lack of comments we have, Ben, I think everyone's thinking <laughs> the same. <laughs> Very good point. Ray. Very good point. Yeah, was uh, we haven't referred to any comments because we didn't have any comments. No. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> As Johnny says, it's probably a fair reflection of where things are. So. Yeah, let's skip swiftly along to a, another race that won't take very long, unsurprisingly. Unlike the Arkle, where the um, the vote may well have changed significantly, I doubt very much this has changed too significantly. We may have a couple more people who may fancy State Man a bit more after after the uh, weekend, but Constitution Hill far out favourite. Far out winner on our poll. Um, you see him pair of pass there. Well, he's been scratched, I think, hasn't he? Mm. So uh, I, yeah, I don't think he's in any races now for the festival. No, so Matt Metro there in the comments. Four people have said him pair of pass. These people need sectioning. He'll be very happy now. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't um, wrong. <laughs> but yeah, we've got Darren in there, DFL shouter. Talking about Constitution Hill, he's just got a sixth gear. Everything else has only five. Um, not really much to say, is there, Johnny? No, I mean, up. As, as much as Constitution Hill is, you know, fantastic horse and he's like the best around at this level, you've got to feel a little bit for State Mount Avenue, who's also a brilliant horse. Um, and I'm starting to become more fond of State Mount than Constitution Hill because you actually see him run, yeah, you know. And, <laughs> That, that's a big thing, isn't it? They're, they're horses to race, and you see, you know, we're going to see Constitution Hill two or three times, aren't we? State Man, you'll probably see four or five times. Um, and he's a proper good horse, isn't he? Um, in, in another year or two years ago or three years ago, he probably would have uh, hosed up in this. So, um, but, you know, we'll see how he gets on again. Hopefully, he gives him a run for his money, and, uh, you know, it's a good race this time. Would you have liked, before we go on to the next race, would you have liked to see Lossy Mouth running this? It would be Seven good. Wouldn't it would be good fun that they put two in against him. Mm. Um, would have made it more of a spectacle, if you want to call it that, but let, let's just say that Willie, Willie knows full well that he's got more of a chance winning the, the Mayor's yeah. hurdle, so he'll he'll play safe and go. Maybe go Mayor's, maybe next year he'll yeah. send her over, I think. He always picks the stronger, easier race, it, he? older. Or should be six. Perfect. Yeah. Lovely. Okay, well, let's skip on to the Mayor's Hurdle then, Ian. Yeah. Again, <laughs> last year, who, who could forget last year? Highly emotionally charged Mayor's Hurdle. Honey Suckle bowing out. Um, And yeah, I mean, Lossy Mouth walking the vote looked incredibly impressive. Potentially the next honeysuckle, maybe. Um, any concerns about trip? Seeing out the two four or? None I, at all I did all. have. No, I haven't. After that run at Cheltenham, she won on the billiardo, as I say. Cruised, cruised to win, and yeah, I, she has no danger. I don't think of her not staying that trip now. She was outstanding. But yeah, but that, that, I did have. So I did have that concern, but not now. We see uh, our mate Phil, Phil Daniel, who you mentioned uh, you boys met up with yeah. last weekend. And Phil says you'd have to think that only the trip could see Lossy Mouth getting beaten. Um, I am an Astro Diamond fan and have backed her at eights, but if Lossy Mouth stays, she looks most likely now. So, uh, Johnny, you've been a keen follower of Lossy from yeah. the early days, so... I mean, I hope she does stay. I mean, I wasn't 100% convinced, but obviously, well, he knows better than us, doesn't he? So uh, this is where she goes. This is where she goes. But uh, yeah, I mean, I suppose it depends on like the pace of the race and stuff, doesn't it? And things like that on the day and the ground and that. But you'd like to think she would do. Um, I still think there's a, you know, there's there's some good challenges in this race. I mean, obviously, one not on that uh, pole there is um, uh, Love Envoy. Um, who was, you know, was second to Honeysuckle last year. 
And without that sort of hanging to the to the left over the lash, she could have got a little bit closer. I, I maintain that to this day. So if the ground comes up in her favour, she'll have a great chance over two mile four. Obviously, she was over two miles last time. Um, I, don't, I just don't think that suited her. And that was just purely a, a pipe opener for this. But yeah, I mean, she might be the nearest challenger come, come the day because you know for a fact that she stays. Carla Marceau obviously is interested as well. Um, and I'd prefer her to Astro Diamond, but that's just, just pocket talking probably. <laughs> well, interesting there you see you saying uh, uh, about Le Van Voix, uh, we've got another comment there. Paul Milner, who says, I'm going for Le Van Voix, two mile four, more her trip. If it gets softer, she'll be even better. If she runs to last year's mayor's form, she's got a decent chance. So, uh, yeah, Green Paul Milner, up. agreeing with uh, what you're saying there, Johnny. Yeah, totally agree What sort of that. price are you looking at on uh, Le Venvoir at the moment? What, 18 uh, to 1? <clears throat> she's actually yeah. value, isn't she? Do you know what I mean? And if you do mm. some each way doubles or trebles, she is one of the value horses that you could find in any race. Thank you, yeah. Yeah. It's it's crazy price for me that. Oh, that was um that's uh, um where I've got eighteen to one is obviously not no running non running no bet so uh, a bit longer but yeah like you say a nice price on Le Venvoi, but mm. generally we're of the consensus that this is Lossy Mouth's race to lose I yeah. think lovely right two races to go and I think things tighten up a little bit. So, um, uh, the Fred Wid said of Boodle's juvenile hurdle, the vote was very close. Jazzy Matty won it last year, Ian. You were yes. keen, you, last year? <clears throat> Good old Matty put us on to that, didn't he? Matty and Johnny. Yeah. 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 yeah I told, I told the other day as well to Dennis O'Regan for, was it 50 grand? It was very, very oh. cheap considering all the other horses went for hundreds of thousands of euros. But yeah, I thought that was a, a steal that one bargain, Ian. Bargain, Ian would only go up to 49 OJ. Yeah, <laughs> right Don't to the, the, into the funds, right, man. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, yeah, looking at the vote, pretty split between Batman Girac and Wadu. Um, yeah, um, whatever, let's pick up on a couple of the comments. To begin with, um, in terms of Wadu, Rich, Digi Tips, how did Wadu not piss this poll? <laughs> <laughs> they are going to be some opponent potentially, though. I wouldn't shock if Wadu goes to the triumph after the trial at DRF showed up very little for Sagino to be afraid of. So, uh, yeah, Rich is uh, in the Wadu camp. As of course, I think our, our friend Scotty Rudds, he's he's keen on Wadu, I think, in here. He is, yeah, he is. Um Snail 717. Liari got to be interesting off 127, surely. I think that one it uh won at Musselburgh on the weekend quite nicely, I think, for Paul Nichols. Um Cameron. Off 128, my money will be going on Salva alongside an already placed anti post bet for Wadu each way. <clears throat> and then I think, was it you, Johnny, who brought our attention to another uh, comment on that today or yesterday from well, George Dorman. Norman? Uh, point to point jockey, ex conditional. Yeah. Who I think all he put was Salva and. A few of those sort of emojis, and sounds like a man who should know. So, Johnny Salva's one I think you've spoken about when we've been in the WhatsApps and what have you. What are you thinking? Yeah. I've kind of latched onto that the last couple of days, really. And I'm looking at the prices. I'd, I'd sooner have him than this Batman Girac at six to one, who's been obviously been a talking horse, but I've just not seen it yet with him. To be perfectly honest, I mean, he might well, he might be very well handicapped, but. Whether he's going to win a race like this is another matter. And, and six to one is very short on what he's done so far. Um, but I think people have, have latched onto that for what he might do. Well, Sal was already done, hasn't he? I mean, he's like 16 to one. Um, he's already won a couple of races this year. And he's still, 
Was he on a mark of 128? I mean, that looks pretty pretty generous to me. So I'd sooner have that one that 10 points bigger than, than the favourite at the moment. Yeah, a couple of other people had commented on Salva as well. Stuart Patterson, Phil Daniel again, all saying that 128 looks an interesting mark. So, yeah. so yeah, I mean, popular one in there. Some, some sort I mean, the other one I'd like to see, though, isn't though. there, I believe? Sorry, didn't didn't Salva beat some horses that Sergino and Burdett Road have beaten as well? I think isn't that the tie-in? I believe. Yeah, okay. I think. Sorry, Johnny. What was uh, you've got another one in here that you? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean it depends whether he's going to run because he belongs to this Noel George and was it Amanda Zetton old train it, um, and whether they send him over is another matter. But he is a JP horse and he's, I think he's currently rated. 136, which is very similar to Mark to what Brazil won this off a couple of years ago. Remember, remember him winning there? Um, you know, he, he's got a bit of course form. He was third behind Sergino at Cheltenham last time and third behind Burdett Road the time before. So he's had a couple of spins round. He's already been on the course. He might be a bit higher, at, you know, higher mark than some of the others, but I think he's not been putting it all in at the end of a couple of those races and could have got a little bit closer. So if he turned up, I'd be very, very keen on him. Now, I noticed two. I think Johnny might have seen the two. There was two at the DRF that ran in the juvenile hurdle that were a bit, let's just say, eye-catching, but you think, hmm, have they been left for the boodles? One was definitely Ethical Diamond, Willie Mullins, yeah. I think, and Mike O'Sullivan. And for me, the other one was Bunting, I think, similar sort of thing, just to ease <laughs> off a bit. Um, but there'd definitely be... Two uh, that'll be on my list, I think, just to just to keep an eye on for the boodles. Lovely. So safe to say, still wide open. No oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we can safely move on to National Hunt Chase, as we touched upon at the start. The fact that Grange Clare West has. Uh, has now been pulled out of the festival may mean that some of these or certain horses could be rerouted mm. to the Browns and so on. Could be a bit of jiggery pokery going on, Ian. <laughs> it could be, it could be. So, um, Embassy Gardens topped the vote just about from Corbett's Cross, who was, of course, brought down today. Um, I think Scotty Rudd said. Embassy Gardens is the absolute banker of the festival in here. He did. Um, he may have changed his mind a little bit now, potentially, <laughs> with that news. Um, yeah, he said it was a satchel job. Yeah. <laughs> Scotty with his satchel out. <laughs> Scotty sack out. Oh, dear <laughs> me. <laughs> of course, our, our own superhero, Alex... He's put a, we've got his comment in here. Salvador Ziggy. Well, Alex has been banging the Salvador Ziggy drum for as long as we can remember. Salvador Ziggy, been the plan for ages. Gordon tends to campaign his horses for this race the same. Plenty of runs in up until, in up until October and then keep them fresh for the National Hunt Chase. Yeah. Hard to disagree with that. He's done a similar sort of thing with Galvin, didn't he, when Galvin won... Uh, 2021, but yeah, I can't. I, I see what, what Alex is saying, so I'm, I'm he's on my list as well. Apart from going over to the states for the yeah, US Grand yeah. National, or whatever it yeah. was, that was, yeah. was, yeah. was a <laughs> funny ride, wasn't it? And what's come out since, but um, we've got a comment there from Raina in podcast, yeah, Nick good Rocket, man. Nick Rocket. I can't even read it. I'm struggling here. Nick Rocket oh. after the 10. 10 up. 10 up. 10 up. I reckon will be Patrick's mount come the festival. And I think the 10 up's the weekend, I believe. Is it Sunday? The three mile, just out of the three mile, was it? I know it's the, the longer race. Oh, yeah, he, he could be. Yes. Well, that's yeah. the thing. See, if Embassy Garden, Gardens did switch, then Nick Rocket and the Manila, Manila Cocuna could become the ones that... Uh, Mm. You know, are the ones that everybody starts diving on. Um, I mean, we haven't mentioned Corbett's Cross, really, have we, there? And he's like, obviously fell today. More brought oh, down today, well, would you say, Johnny? Yeah, brought down today, like yeah. Clash, didn't they? Run Wild Fred, uh, like, right across it him. looked like Run Wild Fred sort of ran right across him. So, yeah. I mean, so, 
I mean, he was okay after the race, wasn't he? And uh, mm. he apparently he is already qualified for this. I wasn't sure, but I've been assured he is. Um, I mean, he, he's still got a chance. Um, he sort of thought, I'm not sure if you can ride him right out the back like they did today, because it, it is. A, I've seen various conversations like this. It is a little dangerous for a, a one-to-four favourite doing that, wasn't it, today a little bit. But um, you'd rather keep him out of trouble. But, uh, you know... With Derek on there today, you could see that this was the plan, wasn't it? Just hold him up and then produce him late and, and win. But obviously, things didn't go that way today. We've got Hamish, Hamish Cumming, Hamish Cumming, three card brag. Mm. What do you reckon, boys? Mark likes three card brag, didn't he? But uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I think he needs a bit. I don't know. He's probably like a grand. Probably needs a bit road. further. <laughs> yeah, 43 <laughs> miles. I think I said when uh, Mark was up with us, but. Um, he he oh, does no, look like a horse though. Always, he he does look a horse like what was it for Kira a couple of years ago? Whatever race you put him in, he always looks like he needs something further. Yeah. Game face. Yeah, needs <laughs> ten miles. Needs eleven miles. Needs 11 miles. <laughs> he is a little bit like that, isn't he? So yeah, I'm not convinced by him to be perfectly honest with you. And uh, again, our mate Phil there. Hi guys. The fact is, Jamie's only entry, and he's. Book Derek O'Connor. Hang on a sec. I've got it. Good, tried to rude him. I think he's supposed to be yeah. tried to ride him. <laughs> I've, tried uh, to I've ride him at Ferry House. I think he speaks volumes of Corbett's Cross. Uh, Horse has got to prove he's got it now. Would be my fancy at the moment. Don't think there's a hope. Stay away. Faye runs here. I wish. Yeah. Yeah. Stay away, Faye's Brown, surely. I mean, Apple away would be one I'd like to see come, uh, come here. With I that think she's an entry oh. horse. Yeah. Do I think? No, I think she's an entry horse. Flat tracker. Mm, I do, yeah. Okay, so yeah, this one really is up in the open again at the moment because, as you say, all best laid plans uh, could be uh, rerouted elsewhere by this time tomorrow, so... Who knows? Other than and a couple of shrewdies picked the winner last year, OJ. Sorry, mate. And a couple of shrewdies picked the uh, the winner uh, last year. Yeah, let's not talk about that too much. Will you? <laughs> no, fair play, fair play. Yeah. You were strong all season long. Yeah. Yeah. No, very good, very good. Yeah, we'll see what Patrick Mullins is on and. <laughs> That's your bet. <laughs> I, I see that the cutting's already begun there. Now these now Grange Clare's out. Uh, Monty Star obviously was fourteen to one on Bet Three Six Five just before this rate before we started recording, and he's now down to eleven to one. Mm. So um, and seven to one non-runner no bet. So he's already been cut. People are on the same sort of lines, aren't they? Moving, you know, moving targets and things. Um, yeah. So yeah. Be really, really, I think over the next couple of days, the markets will probably settle down a little bit. Lovely. Right. Well, there we go. I think that wraps up our uh, week one Twitter tips. Day one Twitter tips. Week one and day one yeah, Twitter yeah. tips. <laughs> However you want to read it. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully Alex will be back next week to, to look through day <laughs> two with you boys. Um, apart from that, look out I think uh, certainly Ian and Johnny, potentially Matty will be on with Dave Cheltmental live tomorrow night Yeah, for the Betfair Hurdle preview for New Britain weekend. So enjoy that, fellas. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Keep your eyes peeled for the competition that will be running on Twitter. Thanks to Connor at Racing Pins again uh, for all his support with that. And any thoughts or comments you wish to make, stick them in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, share, all that jazz. And, yeah, you boys take care and we'll see you all soon. <laughs>